Hello everyone. Welcome back to the next session of Human Health and Diseases. Last time we studied common human diseases, congenital diseases, acquired diseases, types of acquired diseases, parasites, types of parasites, malaria and amoebiasis. Today we'll start with a new disease called Escariasis. This disease is an infectious disease of human intestinal tract. It is caused by roundworm named Escaris lumbricoides. It is an endoparasite. Signs and Symptoms It indicates gastrointestinal discomfort accompanied with vomiting and fever. Presence of live worms in fecal matter. Pulmonary disorders like pneumonitis. Inflammation in alveolar wall. Loss of appetite. Weight loss. And eosinophilia. That is increased number of eosinophils. Which causes allergic reactions in body. Mode of transmission. The main mode of transmission is contaminated food and drink having eggs of these worms. The eggs hatch inside the intestine of the new host that is human being. The larva pass through various organs and settle as adult in the digestive system. After infective eggs are swallowed, the larva hatch and invade the intestinal mucosa. They are carried via circulation to the lungs. The larva mature further in the lungs and penetrate the alveolar walls. Ascending the respiratory tract, it is then swallowed into esophagus. Upon reaching the small intestine, they develop into adult worm. Diagnosis Microscopic examination of stool can be done for diagnosis. Treatment Antihelminthic drugs like Peperazine, Mebendazole, Levamisole, Parantel can be used. They are more effective against this disease. Prevention and Control Avoid defecation in open space. Personal hygiene habits should be adopted. Washing vegetables thoroughly before cooking. Avoid eating raw vegetables. Now, the next disease is filariasis or elephantiasis. It is caused by thread like worms called nematodes. These parasites are transported from person to person via mosquito bite. It is divided into three subtypes that is lymphatic filariasis or elephantasis which is very common and we will study about it. Second is subcutaneous filariasis and Third one is serous cavity filariasis. 
Elephantasis is caused by the worms, Vucereria bancrofti, Brugia malai, or Brugia timuri. The most common cause is Vucereria bancrofti. Signs and symptoms. It shows edema with thickening of skin and underlying tissue. Vucereria bancrofti affects the legs, arms, breasts, scrotums, etc. In the lymphatic filariasis, worms infect lymphatic system and causes enlargement of lymph vessels and nodes. This is elephantasis. That is, limbs are swollen like legs of elephant. Lymphedema, that is, accumulation of lymph fluid in the tissue causing swelling. Hydrocele, that is, testes are enlarged due to accumulation of lymphatic fluid in testis mode of transmission it is transmitted to human body by female culex mosquito the worms are transmitted to human when infected mosquito feeds on human blood the larva escapes mosquito body and arrive on human skin. They penetrate the skin and migrate to the lymphatic system and undergoes two molding before they become adults. They settle in the lymphatic system. Female worms release microfilaria. These microfilaria enters the bloodstream. They are now transferred into the body of mosquito when the mosquito feeds on human blood. Diagnosis Microscopic examination of blood smear for the presence of the larval around worms can be done for diagnosis. Treatment Use of diethyl carbamycin citrate twice a day for three weeks and thereafter five days for six months is effective against filarial worms. Prevention and control Avoid mosquito bite by using mosquito net and insect repellent. Eradication of mosquitoes is essential for control of filariasis. Next disease is typhoid. This is an acute infection of intestine. It is caused by Salmonella typhi. It is gram-negative bacteria found in intestinal lumen of infected person. In this diagram, you can see the bacteria consist of cell wall that is the coat having O antigen and flagella having H antigen. Pathogenicity is due to O antigen, a lipopolysaccharide present on surface of coat whereas flagella contains H antigen. 
signs and symptoms prolonged fever as high as 104 degree fahrenheit general nausea fatigue headache abdominal pain constipation or diarrhea rose colored rash on skin white coat on tongue cough anorexia that is loss of appetite if not treated then it leads to breathlessness irregular heart beats and in some cases hemorrhage mode of transmission it is a food and water borne disease so it spreads through contaminated food and contaminated water insects like house fly and cockroaches act as vectors because they feed on fecal matter and they may transfer the bacteria to food material poor hygiene habits and poor sanitation conditions are responsible for the spread of typhoid diagnosis vidal test is used for diagnosis of typhoid now treatment Surgical removal of gallbladder in severe cases is recommended. Antibiotics like chloromycetin is helpful for the treatment of typhoid. Prevention and control. For prevention of typhoid, WHO recommends two vaccines. one is oral vaccine and the another one is injectable vaccine oral vaccine is ty21a and injectable vaccine that is typhoid polysaccharide vaccine is sold as typhi6 and typhirix next disease is pneumonia it is an inflammatory condition of lungs or alveoli of lungs it is caused by a variety of pathogens that means it can be caused by viruses bacteria or fungus The viruses which can cause this disease includes influenza virus, adenovirus, parainfluenza virus and respiratory syncytial virus. Bacteria which can cause this disease is streptococcus pneumonia. Fungus which can cause this disease includes pneumocystis gyrovesi and pneumocystis carini it can also be caused by chemical burns or physical injury to lungs signs and symptoms it includes cough which produces yellow or greenish sputum or felgum high fever shortness of breath which is also called as dyspnea
chest pain during deep breath or coughing loss of appetite fatigue headache vomiting joint pain and muscle aches mode of transmission it mostly spreads by direct person to person contact it can also spread via droplets released by infected person or by using shared clothes and by using shared utensils treatment course of treatment depends upon pathogen leading to the disease for bacterial pneumonia antibiotics like benzyl penicillin ampicillin and chloramphenicol are effective prevention and control vaccination is important prevention in both children and adults vaccines against haemophilus influenza and streptococcus pneumonia in first year of life help greatly to reduce the chances of causing pneumonia next disease is common cold it is a viral infectious disease of upper respiratory region it is also known as nasopharyngitis acute viral rhinopharyngitis acute coryza or cold it is caused by a group of viruses known as rhinoviruses and coronaviruses signs and symptoms it includes cough sore throat running nose fever nasal congestion sneezing conjunctivitis that is redness of eyes muscle rashes fatigue headache shivering and loss of appetite prevention and control stay away from the person suffering from common cold wash hands with soap and water use handkerchief to cover the nose and mouth during coughing and sneezing alcohol based hand sanitizer can also be used next disease is ringworm it is a fungal infection of skin it is caused by species belonging to genera trichophaton and microsporum it feed on keratin in skin hair and nails signs and symptoms infected skin shows enlarged red ring caused due to ringworm 
appearance of dry scaly lesions on various parts of the body. These are red patches cause intense itching. Infection to nails is termed as onychomycosis. In this, the nails become thick, discolored and disfigured. Athlete's foot usually begins between the toes. These are all fungal infections. Mode of transmission It spreads by sharing clothes and comb of infected person. It can also occur due to close contact with infected person. Diagnosis Diagnosis includes physical examination. Treatment It includes drugs like nystatin, fluconazole, itraconazole, etc. These are more helpful. Prevention and control. Avoid close contact. Avoid sharing of clothes or sports equipment with the person suffering from disease. Wash clothes in hot water with fungicidal soap. Next disease is Dengue. This fever is a painful debilitating vector borne disease and it is caused by Dengue viruses. It is transmitted through the bite of female Aedes mosquito. Mode of transmission the mosquito takes up the dengue virus when it sucks blood of a person suffering from dengue. It cannot spread directly from one person to another person. This disease cannot spread directly from one person to another. It requires a vector that is Aedes mosquito. The mosquito takes up the dengue virus when it sucks blood of a person suffering from dengue. Now, the vector transfers this virus into the body of a healthy person causing disease. I hope you understood the topic. Thank you. Now we'll meet again in next video. Till then, take care of yourselves.